When the cotton modules leave the paddock, they still have a long journey. The first stage of this process is separating the lint from the seed and removing any field trash picked up during harvest. In Australia, cotton gins are located close to cotton growing areas. Australia produces mostly upland cotton, so saw ginning is the most prevalent technology. All Australian gins currently use US manufactured ginning technology. Most use machinery predominantly from a single manufacturer. Steve McNally, plant manager at Queensland Cotton's Dorby Gin, explains the ginning process. Well the load's weighed, we record all the details and then we place it into the module yard. Predominantly we keep it all by grower, variety and field. Well, obviously the big thing is, you know, we don't want any water damage so we build them on a gravel pad. We have five rows and we'll have a designated area where we'll have a fire break. When we're ginning the cotton, we know it's determined by a gin run. So we'll go out and we'll just check the yard, check the rows that we're going to process. The moon bag will be given a gin list, so he'll go and check it off, pick it up and deliver it to the gin. We have an automated machine which separates the plastic from the lint and then it's just fed through as a normal cotton. We squeeze your module, pulse out and the, the cotton will drop down, the plastic bag will stay at the top. We then extract that and it's just dropped down just into a horizontal press. Basically it's all used for recycling, so whether it's locally or exported to China. When it comes off the belt we bring it inside and we read the moisture and put it in the storage chopper. Then we feed the cotton through the system. So this is where we determine how much heat we're going to apply to dry the cotton to the required moisture content. Obviously if we have wetter cotton we have to gin a little slower with higher heat and if we have an ideal moisture content we can let it go through with no heat and just use the air. We drop it into the, to the airstream and it's picked up and taken through a tower dryer. Combine it through a series of shelves and it just gives the lint a little bit more exposure to the heated air to dry it down. Once it goes through that we start the, the pre-cleaning system. So we generally run it over spike rollers, over grid racks, and we're extracting the trash off the bottom. We pick it up with heated air again and take it to what we call the secondary pre-cleaners. We go through a feeder cleaner. This is basically a, another smaller pre-cleaner. The settings are finer and finer, and what we're trying to do is prep the cotton for ginning, fluff it up and just break it up that little bit more. Okay, once we come through the, um, the pre-cleaning system, it's conveyed along to the gin stands. This is a process here where we separate the lint from the seed. We pick it up and we agitate it across a series of saws. The seed will drop down through a small gap and the lint will be taken back to, for further cleaning. Because the deductions are fairly high from going from a, say a three leaf, which is a base grade to a four leaf, we generally double lint clean most of the cotton nowadays and try and remove some of the small pin trash that you get. We're back down into like the five thousands of an inch type settings. We'll actually run it through a second stage lint cleaner which will just make the cotton a lot more uniform and give it a better presentation. Then we take it up, form it back into a bat for pressing where we add moisture. In most occasions we add between a percent and a half and two percent in. We cannot exceed eight percent in a bale. As each bale goes through, a sample from every bale is taken from either side of the bale. The bale tag is kept with the sample so that goes off for grading. The weight is recorded against the bale. Where once the cover goes back on, it goes back outside into a sorting shed, but from here we do direct package in the container for export. All the seed here at this facility, if it's not pure seed for planting, is used for either export or stock feed. We generally average around that 100 to 140,000 bale. The plant in a 12 hour shift generally processes about 900 to 1,000 bales. The turnout that, that we talk about is the percentage of lint out of that module. So whether it's 40% or 45%, that's the lint. So it's determined by we have the weight of the seed cotton and we have the weight of the lint. So that gives them a net turnout. As with all industry, you have to be acres accredited. As with the growers had a, a best management practices, the Cotton Ginners Association did one too, ensuring that we have scales calibrated, we have moisture meters calibrated, our records are kept intact. We have our quiet time where we do our maintenance, stuff like that. And then obviously we go 24-7 when it's pretty busy. We sort of can't wait to get started ginning and we can't wait to finish.